Hello everyone, I am Dr. Deepa. Today we will learn about the Palmer aponeurosis. The Palmer aponeurosis is the very important topic to be studied under the palm. We study the Palmer aponeurosis under the following headings that is the parts of the Palmer aponeurosis, the functions, the morphology and the applied or the clinical importance of the aponeurosis. To begin with, what is Palmer aponeurosis? The Palmer aponeurosis is the deep fascia of the palm. Regarding the parts of the Palmer aponeurosis, this aponeurosis represents three parts that is the thick central part here, the thick central part which is called as the Palmer aponeurosis proper, Palmer aponeurosis proper. So, the central thick part makes up the aponeurosis proper, whereas the on either side, the medial and the lateral parts which is seen here, on either side, there are medial and lateral extension which are quite thin in nature. So, this is about how the palmar aponeurosis looks. So, in total, it has got three parts that is the thick central part and the medial and the lateral parts. The thick central part is called as the palmar aponeurosis proper. On either side, on either side, it spreads out to make up the thin medial and lateral septic. Regarding the palmar aponeurosis proper, which is the thick central part of the aponeurosis, this palmar aponeurosis, as we can see over here, it is triangular in shape. The thick central part of the palmar aponeurosis is triangular with the apex directed proximally and base directed distally. The proximal end of this palmar aponeurosis, that is the apex of the aponeurosis, is attached along the distal border of the flexor retinaculum. Further, where it becomes continuous with the long tendon, that is the tendon of palmaris longus. So, this is about the proximal apical end of the aponeurosis. When you look for the distal portion of the aponeurosis, the distal end of the aponeurosis spreads out into fan-like fashion where it divides into four digital slips. In the distal part, the palmar aponeurosis divides into four digital slips. Four digital slips. Each slip reaches the corresponding medial four fingers corresponding medial four fingers. What is the fate of each di digital slip over here? We will see now. Each di digital slip divides into superficial and the deep parts. Yes, when we look for the individual digital slip of the distal end, each slip divides into the superficial part and the deep part. The superficial slip and the deep bit. So, this superficial slip merges with the dermis of the skin. Yes, the superficial slip merges with the dermis of the skin. Whereas, the deep slip of the digital slip, corresponding digital slip, blends with the ligaments present along the base of the proximal phalanx. The ligaments may be the transverse ligaments of the phalanx the transverse ligaments or the uh, ligaments of the metacarpophalangeal joints phalangeal joints so and later this deep slip merges with the fibrous flexor sheath of the corresponding fingers so this is about the fate of the distal end of the palmar aponeurosis. I repeat, the distal end of the palmar aponeurosis represents the fan-like expansion. This fan-like expansion later gives on four digital slip. Each digital slip divides into the superficial slip and the deep slip. The superficial slip becomes continuous with the dermis, whereas the deep slip merges with the ligaments at the proximal phalanx that is the transverse metacarpal ligaments, metacarpal ligaments and later merges or blends with the fibrous flexor sheaths. 
so this is about the attachments of the central aponeurosis central palmar aponeurosis or simply palmar aponeurosis proper so later on either side of the palmar thick part on either side of this thick and central part we can see the medial and the lateral extension of the palmar aponeurosis the medial and the lateral extension of the palmar aponeurosis which is quite thin and spreads over to cover the hypothenar and the thenar muscles it covers the hypothenar and the thenar muscles and later merges with the deep fascia covering the dorsum of the hand along its ulnar border and the radial border so this is about the thin medial and the lateral septae of the palmar aponeurosis so the thin medial and lateral septae from the respective margins of the central aponeurosis spreads on either side to cover the hypothenar and the thenar eminence later along the corresponding ulnar and the radial border merges with the deep fascia of the dorsum of the hand so this is about the parts and the attachments of the palmar aponeurosis when we just reflect the palmar aponeurosis underneath the palmar aponeurosis there are lot many vessels and nerves now here this is the diagrammatic view to show the attachments and the features of the aponeurosis over here as i have already told the central thick part has got the proximal attachment over the flexor retinaculum which later becomes continuous with the tendon of the palmaris longus over here distally the palmar aponeurosis divides into four digital slips here each di digital slip divides into the superficial and the deep part and later merges with the fibrous flexure sheath of the corresponding digit now this is how the aponeurosis looks once we immediately expose the skin the apical portion here and the distal digital slips over here we can see each slip blending with the fibrous flexure sheath once we reflect the palmar aponeurosis from its proximal end this is how it is seen this is the reflected portion of the aponeurosis deep to the palmar aponeurosis we can see lot many vessels and nerves that is the palmar branches of the ulnar and the radial artery that is the arterial arches whereas the on the other hand we can also see the digital and the palmar branches of the nerves that is the medial nerve and the ulnar nerves so the, the aponeurosis protects the major vessels and nerves under it now in this picture we can mainly visualize the nerves present beneath the palmar aponeurosis which are mainly the branches that is the superficial branches of the ulnar nerve and the branches of the median nerve in this picture we can see the arterial arcade which that is the superficial palmar arch which is seen immediately deep to the palmar aponeurosis along with their digital branches now next moving on to the functions of the palmar aponeurosis the palmar aponeurosis has got lot many functions firstly the palmar aponeurosis provides a firm attachment to the overlying skin thus improving the grip of the hand the second function is that it protects the major vessels and nerves underneath it and prevents the flexor tendons that is the long flexor tendons from bow stringing thirdly it provides origin to the short muscle of the hand that is one of the intrinsic muscle which is called as the palmaris brevis along its ulnar side next the palmar septae which is attached to the aponeurosis subdivide the palm into number of potential spaces these potential spaces are surgically very important when infected so these are the functions of the palmar aponeurosis 
regarding the morphological importance of the palmar aponeurosis the palmar aponeurosis is nothing but the degenerated primitive insertion of the palmaris longus tendon so the palmaris longus tendon in the palm is represented in the form of the aponeurosis that is palmar aponeurosis lastly regarding the clinical importance of the palmar aponeurosis the inflammation there is something called as dupuytren's contracture so what is this dupuytren's contracture sometimes the inflammation of the palmar aponeurosis may be seen which produces the thickening and the contracture of the aponeurosis as a result of this thickening and contracture there is acute flexion of the proximal and the middle phalanges i repeat there is acute flexion of the proximal and the middle phalanges but the terminal phalanges are not affected the ring finger is most commonly involved this inflammatory contracture of the proximal and the middle phalanges is known as the dupuytren's contracture so this needs a special mention under the clinical importance so this completes the palmar aponeurosis so we have studied the palmar aponeurosis under the parts of the palmar aponeurosis its attachments the structures deep to the palmar aponeurosis the functions of the palmar aponeurosis the morphology and the applied importance of the palmar aponeurosis Thank you.